In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Amen. Brother, brothers and sisters, to prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries, let us now call to mind our sins. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. The Almighty God, have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, God Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you are Lord of the Lord, you are Lord of the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who in the glorious transfiguration of your only begotten Son, confirmed the mysteries of faith by the witness of the fathers, and wonderfully prefigured our full adoption to sonship, grant we pray to your servants, that listening to the voice of your beloved Son, we be married to become co-heirs with him, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Daniel. As I watched, thrones were set up, and the Ancient One took his throne. His clothing was bright as snow, and the hair on his head as white as wool. His throne was flames of fire, with wheels of burning fire. A surging stream of fire flowed up from where he sat. Thousands upon thousands were ministering to him, and myriads upon myriads attended him. The court was convened, and the books were opened. As the visions during the night continued, I saw one like a son of man coming on the clouds of heaven. When he reached the Ancient One and was presented before him, the One like a Son of Man received a dominion, of, dominion, glory, and kingship. All peoples, nations, and languages serve him. His dominion is an everlasting dominion that shall not be taken away. His kingship shall not be destroyed. The Word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Responsorial Psalm. The Lord is King, the Most High over all the earth. The Lord is King, the Most High over all the earth. <clears throat> the Lord is King, let the earth rejoice. Let the many islands be glad. Clouds and darkness are round about him. Justice and judgment are the foundation of his throne. The Lord is King, the Most High over all the earth. The mountains melt like wax before the Lord before the Lord of all the earth. The heavens proclaim his justice, and all peoples see his glory. The Lord is King, the Most High over all the earth. Because you, O Lord, are the Most High over all the earth, exalted far above all gods. The Lord is King, the Most High over all the earth. A reading from the second letter of St. Peter. Beloved, we did not follow cleverly devised means when we made known to you the power and coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, but we had been eyewitnesses of his majesty. For he received honor and glory from God the Father. When that unique declaration came to him from the majestic glory, this is my son my beloved, with whom I am well pleased. We ourselves heard this voice come from heaven while we were with him on the holy mountain. 
Moreover, we possess the prophetic message that is altogether reliable. You will do well to be attentive to it, as to a lamp shining in a dark place, until day dawns and the morning star rises in your hearts. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Alleluia, 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 alleluia. This is my beloved Son, with whom I am well pleased. Listen to him. Alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Luke. Jesus took Peter, John, and James and went up a mountain to pray. While he was praying, his face changed in appearance, and his clothing became dazzling white. And behold, two men were conversing with him, Moses and Elijah, who appeared in glory and spoke of his exodus, and he was going to accomplish in Jerusalem. Peter and his companions had been overcome by sleep, but becoming fully awake, they saw his glory and the two men standing with him. As they were about to part from him, Peter said to Jesus, Master, it is good that we are here. Let us make three tents, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. But he did not know what he was saying. While he was still speaking, a cloud came and cast a shadow over them, and they became frightened when they entered the cloud. Then from the cloud came a voice that said, This is my chosen son. Listen to him. After the voice had spoken, Jesus was found alone. They fell silent and did not, at that time, tell anyone what they had seen. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise you, Lord Jesus. Jesus. Today is the Feast of the Transfiguration of the Lord, the fourth mystery of the light. Christ is fully human and fully divine. We say that Christ is human like us in everything except sin. He is as human as us in everything except sin. He ate, he laughed, he cried, he got upset. Remember the temple when he drove out all those money changers? He wept at the death of Lazarus. Um, the finding in the temple, remember the, the anguish he caused his mom and dad when he was lost? Very human, except sin. He did not commit any sin at all. Why? Because while he is fully human, he is also fully divine. Divine in everything, in mercy, in fullness, in perfection. He is human like us, but he is divine like the Father. And today, the apostles, Peter, John, and James, were privileged to see that. Many people saw Christ only as the human Christ, you know, the son of a carpenter, the miracle worker. In fact, um, many of them were saying, you know, uh, we know him. We know his father. He is not that great as people think he is. We know his brothers and sisters. We know his cousins. We know his family. And so many people did not believe Christ as the Messiah because they only saw the humanity of Christ, the human side of Christ. It took a while, even for the apostles, to fully understand and experience that this Christ, that they saw and experienced as the human Christ, was also the Son of God, divine, as God, as the Father. This is my beloved Son. Listen to Him. That experience on the mountain, uh, John, James, and John, um, uh, Peter, John, and James, must have been very overwhelming because of the transformation. This is very important. The transformation did not only happen to Christ when they saw not only the 
human Christ, but the divine Christ. But the transformation also happened to Peter, John, and James. They became a change, they became changed uh, persons. That experience would be very important in their transformation as disciples as well. You know, when we talk about retreat, recollection, we always talk about that as our transformation, our experiences of transformation. We go to a retreat house, a different person, and hopefully we come out of the retreat house, a fully transformed person. And that was exactly the experience of Peter, John, and James. This transformation is a challenge for us to see the world and to see reality around us, no longer with our own eyes, but with the eyes of God, with the eyes of Christ. Forgiveness, for example, is not easy. Left alone in ourselves, forgiveness is not only difficult, sometimes it's impossible. But someone who has been transformed sees forgiveness differently. It becomes a totally different experience. Kindness, patience. Our patients are not limitless. We know that. You know, even uh, for parents, no matter how much you love your children, I'm sure when they were kids, you know, um, if they start breaking plates and glasses every day, uh, you don't simply say, oh, what a wonderful thing to do. <laughs> There's another dozen of glasses, you know, by the cabinet. Start breaking them again. Uh, sometimes you lose your patience. But it's different again when we talk about transformation. Infusing our patience with the patience of Christ. Difficult, but not impossible. And so the, the Feast of the Transformation today is not only a proclamation of who Christ is, fully human and fully divine, how Peter, John, and James witnessed that transfiguration, that change in figure, how he was transformed before their eyes, but also an experience of transformation for them, how they became changed persons. They have become Christ-like. Slowly, Peter and John and James would be transformed to become Christ-like. And it's interesting because as they were transformed slowly and that experience, there's always the temptation to, you know, when we go on a retreat or recollection, when we have that very intense spiritual awakening, we don't want the retreat to end. You know, we don't want to go home. We don't want to leave the retreat house. It's nice to be there. You know, we don't want the day to end. We didn't want the retreat to end. Same thing with Peter, John, and James. He said, oh Lord, it's nice to be here. That's it. We will live here. We will live here. It's a beautiful experience. And the Lord said, well, no. Reality is not only in this mountain. Reality is not only in a retreat house. Reality is not only in church. Reality is also going down from the mountain to the world. Where do we practice patience? In the world. Where do we practice forgiveness? In the world. Where do we practice kindness and generosity? In the world. Not up there while we are praying. We do not become forgiving simply by being forgiving in our minds uh, inside the church. We forgive in concrete people. We become patients in concrete with people. We become kind and generous in concrete with people. That happens going 
down from the mountain into the world. So transformation is essential, but transformation does not end with us. Christianity is not a secret society where, you know, it's almost like discovering things about God and we keep it ourselves. Oh, finally, now I know who God is. No. Christianity is public. We publicly profess our faith. We don't keep it to ourselves. It's not enough to say, you know, as you know, other people would say, oh, it's nice to accept Christ as my Lord and Savior. Okay. And then what? Christianity is a proclamation. Our life is a proclamation. And so when the Lord reprimanded Peter and told him no, when Peter said, it's nice to be here, let's build three tents, one for you, one for Moses, one for Elijah, forget about us, it's okay, we can sleep on the grass as long as we stay here. The Lord said no. The whole of reality is in the world. We are in this world. But as we practice our Christian life in this world, let it be a proclamation of God. As I said, that transformation, we start to see reality from the point of view of God, as followers of God. And so today, we pray for that gift of transformation, the feast of um, the transfiguration of the Lord. To see Christ as he truly is, fully God and fully human, true God and true human. But more than that is to see in us God, Christ, that our transformation is not based simply on desire to please others. You know, the pretensions to be to be good, to be, to be nice. Rather, genuine, authentic transformation in the heart. And that as we get transformed, let our lives become a proclamation to others. Let's come down from the mountain, go into the world, live our transformed lives in concrete, in reality. And so may the Lord strengthen us in our desire to keep changing every day, and as we change every day for the better, may the Lord constantly guide us and strengthen us. It's easy to give up. It's easy to sometimes get tired doing something good. Uh, may the Lord, especially today as we celebrate the Feast of the Transfiguration, may the Lord be our constant strength and guide as we live our lives every day. Again, reminding us of what Pope Francis would always say, holiness is in the daily events of our life. <clears throat> Together we gather in prayer to ask the Father to grant our needs and those of our brothers and sisters. We now pray for the church and its apostolic mission to spread God's glory throughout the world. May God continue to guide this work. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord we pray for those who hold public office. May God give them the courage to lead with wisdom and integrity. Let us pray to the Lord. We pray for all who are facing challenges and difficulties in their lives. May the peace of Christ that is beyond all understanding bring them comfort and resolution. Let us pray to the Lord. We pray for all who have died. May God bring them to a seat at the heavenly banquet. Let us pray to the Lord. And today we pray in a very special way for Isidora Jibakani and Donald Massoni for whom this Mass is offered. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord and for all of us gathered today, for ourselves, for those who ask for prayers, those whom we promise to pray for, we keep praying for an end to the pandemic. We keep praying for the recovery of health for those who are ill. May the Lord restore them to full health. We pray for families and our loved ones. May the Lord always keep our families and our loved ones safe. And for all the intentions that we hold be in the silence of our hearts.
Let us pray to the Lord. Lord our Almighty Father, hear the prayers we offer today through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us our bread of life. Blessed Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Through the divine work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed Let us now pray that my sacrifice and yours be made acceptable to God Almighty Father. May the Lord accept your sacrifice and your praise the Lord in his name. Sanctify, O Lord, we pray, these offerings here made to celebrate the glorious transfiguration of your only begotten Son, and by his radiant splendor cleanses from all the stains of sin through Christ, O Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift up the Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right it is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For he revealed his glory in the presence of chosen witnesses, and filled with the greatest splendor that bodily form which he shares with all humanity that the scandal of the cross might be removed from the hearts of his disciples, and that he might show how the body of the whole church is to be fulfilled, what so wonderfully shone forth first in its head. And so with the powers of heaven, we worship you constantly on earth, and before your majesty without end, we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord, 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 you are indeed holy, O Lord, the foundable holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and confess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ may be gathered into one with the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring it to the fullest of charity together with Francis, our Pope, John, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, 
that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, the Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints have pleased you throughout the ages. We merit to be co-heirs of eternal life, and we praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory now is yours forever and ever. Amen. Amen. At the Savior's command and form the divine teachings, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray for every evil and graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we will be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but in the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And, with and let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Our spiritual communion. Amen. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen.
Let us pray. May the heavenly nourishment we have received, O Lord, we pray, transform us into the likeness of your Son, whose radiant splendor you will to make manifest in his glorious transfiguration, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. With your and the Almighty God bless you all, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Have a beautiful day. Thank you.